is no most valuable Viking. There are only 40 most valuable Vikings. 40 for 60, put it that way. I, I, I just can't accept this. Thank you. For the Minnesota Vikings, the 1969 season ended in January just as it had begun in September with an unexpected defeat. It all began with quarterback Gary Quazzo and receiver John Henderson who combined perfectly for the season's first touchdown. Quazzo then launched a bomb to Gene Washington for a comfortable halftime lead over the New York Giants. But new coach Alex Webster and 63,000 Yankee Stadium fans ignited the Giants, and a sure victory slipped through the Vikings' grasp, 24-23. Then came the home opener. For one year, Joe Cap had thought about the Baltimore Colts. His thoughts became reality when an early touchdown pass flew straight to Dave Osborne. Moments later, a long pass to Gene Washington covered 83 yards and a second touchdown. A third touchdown pass sailed to wide receiver Bob Grimm, number 27. Touchdown pass number four went to tight end Kent Kramer. Ignoring a fractured left wrist, Cap floated touchdown number five to Gene Washington. Cap drilled a short pass to tight end John Beasley for touchdown number six. A cap pass to Jim Lindsay became number seven, which tied the NFL record for touchdown passes and heralded the start of something big for Joe Cap and the Vikings. The University of Minnesota's Memorial Stadium was the site for game number three. The pack was back. But in the first pro game ever played in a Big Ten stadium, Minnesota's Purple Gang decked Green Bay's Bart Starr eight times and missed a shutout by only five seconds. In game four, the Vikings were rambunctious guests at the home opener of the Chicago Bears. The Vikings not only defeated the Bears by 31 points, but earned the first shutout in their nine-year history. True to the code of 40 men for 60 minutes, the biggest play occurred when number 57, former Bear Mike Riley, blocked a punt and recovered it for a touchdown. Game five was against the Cardinals in St. Louis. Joe Cap threw one touchdown pass to John Beasley, and two to John Henderson. And for the first time in their history, the Vikings had won four consecutive games. Back home against Detroit, Joe Cap bombed the Lions for a 21-point halftime lead. Cornerback Ursel McBee, number 46, intercepted three passes, and the Vikings rolled on to their fifth straight victory. Next, it was the Bears' turn again. 
this time, Bobby Douglas wore the bullseye. The Purple Gang got to him nine times for almost 80 yards in losses. On offense, magnificent blocking allowed Joe Cap to throw two more touchdown passes. The Vikings ended the first half of the season in style when number 26, Clint Jones, broke free for an 80-yard touchdown, the longest NFL run in five years. The Vikings were riding high with six straight wins, two of them over their old nemesis, the Bears, and a national audience was beginning to understand the meaning of 40 for 60. The second half of the season began with the red-hot Cleveland Browns, led by quarterback Bill Nelson. The Browns were quickly cooled. The front four pressured Nelson into four interceptions, three by number 20, Bobby Bryant. The Viking offense scored the first nine times it had the ball. Joe Capp survived Cleveland's pressure and completed three more touchdown passes to Gene Washington as the Vikings rolled up their seventh straight victory, 51-3. Next came the crucial rematch with the Packers in Milwaukee on a day when neither team's offense could score a touchdown. In a savage defensive battle, the Vikings gained their eighth consecutive victory. Green Bay's last chance was thwarted by Bobby Bryant's interception inside the Viking 10. The Pittsburgh Steelers were next. Quarterback Gary Quazzo for the second straight week played a major part in proving that 40 for 60 was more than just a slogan. The game's biggest play was an example of what happens when a team is winning. Number 87 is John Beasley. 26 is Clint Jones. And 52 is the number of points the Vikings scored as they rolled to their ninth straight victory. Then came Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. The Lions had won four straight and were prepared to play their biggest game in seven years. At stake was the Central Division title. The Vikings forged an early lead and then teed off on quarterback Greg Landry. The final crushing blow occurred when Alan Page tipped a pass and Jim Marshall intercepted. Page, attempting to block for Marshall, wound up scoring himself as the Vikings swept their 10th straight and their second straight Central Division Championship. Next came the undefeated Rams in their glamorous Hollywood setting. Roman Gabriel, the NFL's most valuable player, had led the Rams to 11 straight wins. But it was the Vikings who controlled the game. And it was the Vikings who left the Coliseum with 11 straight wins. Back home the following week, the biggest story of the day was an 11-year-old boy whose hot air balloon dumped him in the Minnesota River three miles away. It was a tough act to follow. But the Vikings and 49ers managed quite a show of their own. Fred Cox scored all the points in the first half. Three. In the second half, the visibility improved. A long pass to Gene Washington finally made the difference as the Vikings mushed to their 12th straight victory. 
the longest one-season winning streak in 35 years, and once again, Joe Kapp had played Santa Claus for the Vikings. The final game of the regular season was in Atlanta, which some people consider part of the sunny south. The Falcons won 10-3. In just three years, Coach of the Year Bud Grant had led his team from the bottom to the top. The Vikings scored the most points in all of pro football. They gave up the fewest ever in a 14-game season. Such success begins with defense, and defense begins with the front four. Number 81, Carl Ellert. Number 77, Gary Larson. Number 88, Alan Page. And number 70, Jim Marshall. All four played in the Pro Bowl. Right in Jim Marshall is perhaps the quickest striking force in football. Tackles Gary Larson and Alan Page apply the inside pressure. To all pro Carl Eller, the philosophy of defensive football is simple. Uh, defensive ball players take pride in, in knowing that they're rough and that they're tough and that they're mean and that you really have to just hit and smack and sock and tear and uh, whatever happens is going to be all for one and one for all. The Vikings secondary also punishes people with devastating hitters like Dale Hackbart, number 49. The Vikings led the NFL in interceptions with 30. Everyone helped. Carl Kosulke, number 29. Ursel McBee, number 46. Ed Shirokman, number 45. Paul Krauss, number 22. And the new star, Bobby Bryant, number 20. In spite of his rail-thin 168 pounds, Bryant always seemed to be making the big play for the Vikings. Seven interceptions were grabbed by the linebackers, but their usual style was less subtle, like the blitz. Number 58 is right linebacker Wally Hilgenberg. Number 60 is left linebacker Roy Winston. Number 59 is middle linebacker Lonnie Warwick. Place kicker Fred Cox scored 121 points, the most points ever scored in the NFL by place kicking. Another special team member, number 40, Charlie West, accounted for almost 500 yards in kick returns. The team's greatest improvement was in the high-scoring offense, especially the passing game. It wasn't fancy, but it was extremely effective. John Beasley, number 87, was the tough-catching tight end. Number 80, John Henderson, was a graceful and effective wide receiver.
Number 84, Willowy Gene Washington, is rapidly approaching his goal to be the best receiver in football. He can catch the ball anywhere on the field, but most often he seems to catch it behind the defense. Offensive tackles Alderman, Davis, and Yeri. Guards Sunday, Ballone, and White. And center Tengelhoff are among the best at opening holes for runners like number 26, Clint Jones. Number 32, second year back Oscar Reed, averaged nearly five yards per carry. Number 30, Bill Brown, is one of the best receivers in football. But what Bill Brown is best known for is his roughhouse style of running. Dave Osborne, number 41, is also an excellent receiver. But what he is best known for is his vast repertoire of second effort moves. Among the 40 most valuable Vikings is quarterback Joe Cap, but somehow he is something more. December 27th, Metropolitan Stadium. The Vikings versus the Rams in the Western Conference Championship game. Time the Rams led 17 7. It was no longer 40 for 60. It was now 47,900 for 30. Please, 
39 seconds to play, and the Rams were driving. Then came the play of a lifetime for Alan Page, number 88. Suddenly, it was over. For the Vikings and their fire-breathing quarterback, there was to be one more magic day against Cleveland in the NFL championship game. the first seven minutes, the Vikings were being acclaimed as the new NFL champions. It was a magic day that belonged in great part to a unique quarterback. It was a magic day that belonged, most of all, to 40 men competing as one.